So we're here at the Lenaro Connect Budapest and who are you? Hi, I'm Kun Koy. I work in the automation and CI part of Lenaro. So uh, automation and CI, what is that? We do the, uh, the builds for all the, the things we uh, release like the Debian and Open Embedded and we uh, also do the integrated testing with, with, with Lava or other things. And uh, here's some 96 boards, uh, what do you think about those? They're, they're, they're a nice form factor but I'm more interested in, in how it will be in a few months from now because there is a movement to write FIFA L2 drivers for all the media accelerators. One of my hobby projects is working on Kodi, the media sender application. And currently it's really hard to get it working on ARM because every SOC vendor has their own library. There is no standard interface on regular Linux. There's one on Android, but not on regular Linux. And finally, people are moving towards FIFA L2. What do you call it? Three, four, L2? FIFA L2, video for Linux 2. Uh, it has been in the kernel for a long time, but they're now extending it to encode and decode support for H.264, VP9, and things like that. So you can get the hardware accelerated decoding and rendering and scaling uh, through a standard interface. So you don't have to write SOC-specific code anymore. So uh, one of the differentiators, some of the SOC vendors had good video playback, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like M-Logic is pretty good, but yeah. uh, lots of them have pretty good stuff. But how's it going to be better now? It's well, it will be the, the, the same hardware. So for a user, there won't be any use of visible change. But for example, an application like Kodi, it doesn't have to write different versions because Kodi has a specific AM logic code. And now Rockchip wants to add Rockchip specific code. And that should all go away. And it will have standard free for all two code. You just talk to FFMP again, it just works. So uh, uh, you, uh, you've, you've been looking at the Amlogic S905, the 905X, yes. the Xiaomi Mi Box. I have the Mi Box mm -hmm. made with Android TV. What do you think about those? I, I, I love them. I have two, one of uh, S905 five boxes and one Xbox, and they're, they're, they're cheap and they work well. Uh, so that, that's what I use for my main Kodi usage when I watch movies or, or TV shows uh, in my house. So I'm very much a fan of that. But how is that going to get better? What I would because like... Because you say uh, the, the video for Linux 2, what? Right. Yes. So that wouldn't change things. But for example, if I would get a uh, Dragon Board 820 that has better hardware specs, uh, it has, for example, gigabit Ethernet and 905X only has 100 megabit, I would like to use that. And right now I can run Kodi on it, but Kodi cannot use the hardware acceleration, so it will all be CPU decode. So 1080p works, but 4K won't. So all these uh, boards are maybe going to have very good uh, hardware accelerated media playback? Yes. So, for example, uh, High Silicon is working on the the VFL2 driver. I don't know how far along is it, but I, I know they're working on it. So, it would be nice if you can get just use a high key or a Dragon Board for 10C to do 1080p hardware decoding, Cody, because it's a really nice small form factor. And 4K maybe. Uh, on all the current boards, there is a maximum of HDMI 1.4 and they max out at uh, 1080p so they can't even do the, the 4k at 24 uh, frames so it's sadly uh, the, the hardware might be able to decode it but you can't put it on a screen and uh, um, making a driver like this uh, what kind of work goes into that and where does it go on the soc is it is it running on the arm as the cpu it's running it, on the gpu or it, somewhere it's, else? it's it's like a GPU because it's a separate hardware block that, that, that you program. Some might need firmware, for example TI, you needed a lot of firmware to, to drive it. Uh, I think AM Logic, you don't really need firmware, you just talk to the hardware. You set up some registers. So it depends on the chip vendor how much work it is. Uh, but it's, it will be a Linux kernel interface, so you just open the V4L node, uh, query its capabilities and then just push the video in. Is Linaro doing some stuff with that? To make this happen? Yes, the Linaro home group uh, is very interested in this because for uh, if you want to have a reference TV platform you need to have a reference library and you can do it with an SOC vendor library but if you want to make it generic V4L2 is the answer. And that's uh, free, that's open source yes. driver? Yes. For video decode, not encode? Encode as well. Encode that, that, as well. That goes into the same framework. I'm 
this is a hobby project for me, so I don't have a good view of what the home group is doing, but I know they work on, on decode because they work on set of boxes. And uh, what's the main difference uh, in, your, in your view, uh, 905 and 905X? So uh, the 905X is, was optimized to be as cheap as possible. A two-layer PCB, uh, network Mac and Fi integrated, uh, tuned for specific eMMC. So your bomb cost is very low. It was made to be very, very cheap. So it, it cuts some corners. Uh, for H.264 decode, the 905 is better but 905X gets you VP9, so like, what do you want? If you want gigabit Ethernet, 905X is not the answer, but it's just so incredibly cheap, you can't really beat that. And uh, that's, that's providing for some amazing set-top boxes, yes. where the bomb cost is below $30, and uh, this, this is what the, the Xiaomi uh, Box 3, mm -hmm. it's based on that. The retail price is below $30, so bomb is, has to be below 10 and that's including plastic for the tooling for the case. That's crazy. That, it really is crazy. That's why most of those boxes look the same, because they use the same plastic tooling, but it, you don't really care. It, it, it's a small rectangle you hide beneath your TV, done. But you remove the Android TV UI. You don't like yes. that? What do you like? I, I don't uh, like Android, and I, I, I bought one of the cheap boxes, so I got a vendor build with all the piracy add-ons installed. And like. I don't trust my data to that, so I re refreshed it with Libre ALEC, so that runs just Linux and Kodi, and I'm really happy with that. What is it, Libre ALEC? Libre ALEC is a fork of Open ALEC, that, might, that name might ring a bell, and their tagline is just enough operating system for Kodi. So they, it's a really minimalistic install, it just has just enough Linux to run Kodi. So you download the SD card image, you put it in the SD card, you put it in and it boots up and within a few seconds you it have Kodi over. running. And then it can take over the you can how do you take over the, the Xiaomi Android TV box for that? So uh, they have a lively community. Uh, but for example WeTech is sponsoring work. So they have an official WeTech build for the 905 things. Uh, Solid Run has an official build for IMX6 and our community build. So for uh, your Xiaomi box you would take uh, a community build put it on an SD card, and I think the only thing you need to do is find a toothpick to push the reset button when you insert uh, the SD card, but you only have to do it once, and then it works in parallel to Android TV. If you remove the SD card, it will boot Android again, so it's, it's non-destructive. So it, it's okay that it's an SD card, it doesn't take too long to load no. the first time? No. It's pretty fast? It's pretty fast. Like how many, how long? Um, my box, when I use an SD card, from power to Kodi was like 15 seconds or so. You can do it faster on the eMMC, but it's, it's very fast. So that's it, you just load from SD card, you don't need to remove Android TV? No, you don't. And, uh, but Kodi UI, is that good enough? Or isn't it like a little bit basic? It's, Could they do something to make it nicer? They recently in the release that they released, what is it, two weeks ago, they switched to a new GUI, which fixes another a few things, but I'm still getting used to it because I used the old GUI for years and years. So it's it's a big change. I'm still not sure if I'm happy about it, but but I'm giving it a, a good try. So they are receptive for, for GUI issues, and it has improved a lot. For example, the, the YouTube plugin now can give you a tile view with little uh, thumbnails for the pictures like you would have on a website instead of a long text list. So that that's a big improvement for me. But you can't use voice search and stuff like that. No. It's just, uh, uh, they call it add-ons, right? Yeah. And the add-ons are awesome? It, it, it depends. The official add-ons work quite well. For example, the, the YouTube plugin, it works quite well. But since it is community, you have to go to Google, get your own API key. And you have to do a lot of work to get signed in to YouTube, not like on your TV or media box where you just type in your uh, Google credentials and you get your history and subscription. You have to do a bit more work. That's that's not a problem for me, but I guess for the regular user that, that might be an issue. And what is those what are those fully loaded coding boxes? <laughs> those are highly <laughs> illegal. What's wrong with them? Uh, they you ship just have an, an add on pre installed, that's it? Multiple add ons and most of those add ons uh, link to web servers that restream things without a subscription or link to a so-called card sharing website. So for uh, cable TV, you usually need a smart card. 
to decode things and they have software that, that lets you share the card over the network. So only one person has the card and subscription and thousands of people will stream it. So the Cody people are not happy with that because they would like to be associated with Media Center and not rampant yeah, piracy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, uh, <laughs> I'm joking, but how do they get all this bandwidth to serve so many people streaming stuff? How does that work? I, I don't know. I've never used one of those streaming servers, but I guess cloud is cheap. It's cheap enough so this can be thousands of people watching yeah. stuff for free. Uh, well, for free, and they also have subscription models, so you can subscribe to a piracy service for, let's say, a dollar a month. And for a dollar a month, you can buy a lot of EC2 or Google Cloud instances. So that's on the Kodi, and Kodi is just going to be the king forever, do you think? Or that's the way to do media? I, I, I don't know. They, they do one thing really well. They have invested in good audio and, and, and video sync, so that, that if you play a movie, it looks good. In no frame drops and, and tearing and things like that, so they, they make an effort for that. I'm, for 24p, I'm really sensitive to Judder. So, and when I go to a TV store and they have a demo movie, just it's like someone scraping over my, my retina when, the, when you have Judder. So I'm really happy that the 905X can do full, true 24p and my TV as well. So that makes watching Blu-ray rips really good. So 905X is perfect for Kodi. Yes. You don't need more performance for Kodi? No. There's no need for more because it does 4K, it does H.265, DP9, yes. 4K, you don't want 8K. So basically, but the UI could be faster with a faster CPU or not really? Or, or, or be better GPU. The, the 905X has a relatively slow Mali, so that, that could use some improvement. But what, you, what I do now, I run the GUI at 1080p and for 4K video, it will just go to 4K for just the video and that, that works well enough. And how about, uh, how about if you want to run a desktop computer, 905X is not enough performance, right? No. For sure not? No. What's not fast enough about it? It, it uses the Cortex-A53, which is not the fastest ARM V8 core. Uh, it's a tiny, tiny chip. It's a tiny chip, and uh, the memory bandwidth is not that much in it. You get two gigs of RAM, and for a Linux desktop, you really want more. So what would you recommend for minimum desktop configuration? I don't know. It depends on what you is want to do. Is one of the chips in the this? So is one of these fast enough? Oh, you want faster? I want faster. I think personally, if I were able to pick, I would try to do the 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 chip on the Dragonboard 820 because that that has a faster GPU, more memory bandwidth, uh, and just, I think it even has PCIe, but I'm not entirely sure. It has SATA for for faster connects. So that would be a good candidate to do. And the GPU driver is open, which is a big plus. Free Adreno, but it's a cryo core. That's fine. I think so. Cryo, you don't, don't need the ARM Cortex-A73. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice also, right? That would, that would be nice. Cool. But you can't, can't have everything because the perfect chip would be expensive. Just look at the Cavium chip. You get 96 cores that is really fast, but it's like really expensive. Do you have a Chromebook? I have one of the old Samsung Chromebooks. I think, what is it, the Snow? But it's not your main computer, right? No. But uh, there's some talk that uh, hopefully soon, all the Linaro engineers are going to be able to have ARM laptops. Is that going to happen or is it just people I, talking? I don't know. We, we would, not every engineer wants the same. For me, my laptop is just a way to SSH into a server. So that I don't care that much. Yeah, the, the Chromebook Snow would have been enough if it would have a better trackpad. I really love Apple trackpads. Uh, the way they, the glass is smooth enough that I hate other trackpads. So I stick with my Apple laptop unless I get a good trackpad. But some people do compilation on their laptops and then you would need a lot of RAM. 16 gig or 32 gig. Cool, but that's supported with 64-bit ARM. 64-bit ARM has a 64-bit address space, but for example, the 905X memory controller, I think, maxes out at 2 gigs. Right. So, it, so it depends. It, de it, it depends. So in theory, it works, but if you want to have a cheap chip, you can just put in a smaller memory controller and then All you've right. lost. Cool. So that's awesome. Looking forward to some improvements happening here yep. uh, with the 96 boards and uh, everything else happening at Linaro with the video community so let, let, uh, hopefully i can interview some of the guys doing the home mm -hmm. home group yep.